So if you didn't happen to have watched any of the other linear algebra related videos regarding cats and bras and everything, um, or if you just want a quick review, um, we're going to just break down everything that is essentially going to be referenced a number of times uh, in a quantum computing course, for instance, in a basic quantum computing course. Um, and we're just going to lay that out and very briefly go over it. So now there are three primary concepts that I do want to make sure I touch on. The first one just being that as long as we're given some uh, set of some n-dimensional cats, we have to be able to determine is it an orthonormal basis? Ortho, I apologize for my handwriting once again, normal Basis. The second one uh, being, uh, once we're given this orthonormal basis, are we able to express some vector v as a linear combination? And we'll get to that in a second. Um, and the third primary item I do want to make sure I touch on is being able to then turn around and if we're given the linear combination of v, can we find the magnitude? Magnitude is some vector v. All right, so crash course on essentially all the linear algebra um, that you will likely need as a quick kind of review. So first things first, um, essentially when we talk about these uh, kind of uh, vectors in a sense, right? Vectors being single row or single column kind of uh, versions of matrices. Um, essentially what we're going to be talking about are bras and cats, and this is just general bra and cat notation. Um, so a bra is uh, written in the following way, and a cat is written with the arrow uh, pointing towards the right. And so if we have a bra, right, that's essentially just equal to a row of some elements, and if we have a cat, that is equal... Whoop, let me have the arrow go the same way. Um, we have it is essentially equal to a column of some value out there. All right, so notation aside, now let's begin talking about just what an orthonormal uh, basis is. So as a reminder, an orthonormal basis uh, is essentially composed of all these cats, of all these vectors that are mutually orthogonal to one another. Keyword orthogonal. Right, and so from a geometric perspective, we're looking at, say, two-dimensional uh, cats. An orthog uh, orthogonal uh, kind of version of a vector would be something such as uh, a series of essentially vectors that are fundamentally just perpendicular to one another, right? So what does that mean, perpendicular? Now, there's a couple of ways we can kind of do this, um, but in general, uh, the kind of concept um, is that we have two vectors, um, say b1 and whoop, two cats, uh, b1 and b2, and we say they are orthogonal to one another. Not only are they geometrically, uh, from a geometric perspective, and 2D uh, can be seen as being, you know, quote, and quote, uh, perpendicular to one another, but the general kind of uh, relationship is the following, such that if you take the square of them, right, this should be equal to b1 plus b2 squared or something something along those lines now going on from there oop and one moment i apologize i didn't quite put in the magnitude all right so just uh, as a side note just the extra lines of the outside refers to the magnitude that is the size of your given um sort of vectors and so based on this kind of relationship that we have here we can also conclude that if we take the bra cat uh product of b1 and b2 right this should be equal to zero. Um, so that's just the general crash course of precisely uh, these general relationships. And so an orthonormal basis is essentially where you have a set of all these cats that are mutually orthogonal to one another. So an orthonormal basis, right, let me use a different color, orthonormal basis, basis. Or it takes everything and it goes, hey, you know, if you match it up with every single vector out there, they are going to form a sort of some sort of relationship as we have just established before. And now, first things, uh, when we reach our first item on the list, showing that some set of n-dimensional cats, b1 all the way up until bn, right, just n just being the index here, right, we want to show that they are orthonormal bases. And in order to do that, um, you take, uh, let's say, some uh, matrix A um, is equal, uh, composed of b1, 
all the way up until B and again this is a matrix this is not a set these are two slightly different things they have similar elements though but in a matrix of course the order here does matter and everything and position it does as well and we multiply A by A transposed right and we multiply them together we compute when we find their uh, kind of n by n uh, related matrix and in doing so we figure out whether or not the resulting matrix is what is known as an identity uh, uh, identity matrix so just like one 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 zero 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 for everything else right um, and the reason being that if you take uh, a and multiply by a transposed right this is this first element here is just some b i multiplied by b i right and as we established before if it is orthonormal this should be equal to one and if it is uh orthonormal again b i and b j where i is not equal to j this should be equal to zero um and so basically um that's how you can show whether or not it has an orthonormal basis item two uh given some orthonormal basis we have to show that some vector uh and write it as a linear combination of this so again we're given oops again we're given b1 b2 and so on and so forth until we once again reach b n right and so we're given some ket v and we want to show it as a linear combination so actually all we have to do right is to take every single element in this set b1 plus b2 plus b3 and so on and so forth until we reach uh, b n right dot 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 Right, and we just put some constant in front of it, x1, x2, x3. Uh, oh, not x3, I'm sorry, xn. Right, and it goes on so on and so forth from there, and we just need to solve for these values, and it's entirely possible to do so, and if you actually do end up solving for it, what you end up having um, it is something along the lines of is equal to, uh, I do believe, uh, b1 multiplied by your vector, oops, multiplied by your vector, multiplied by b1, and you know this general format is applicable to every single one of them uh, with a different index of course and of course if we did uh, on as a side note this was not entirely mentioned in any other video um if we did want to be able to find the values of x1 x2 and x all the way up to x and we merely need to take some a transposed right and multiply it by our given vector right which results in uh, b1, v, b2, v, and so on and so forth until we reach bn and v. Right, so that's just a kind of shortcut way of doing it. Um, and so going on from there, let's talk about item number three on the list of this crash course, which is basically given some orthonormal bases, right? Um, once again, b1, so on and so forth, and I won't walk you through uh, the act of just writing all this out again. Um, given this, right, we have some vector is equal to the linear combination of some constant b1, right, plus c2, right, we want to figure out the magnitude of v, of your vector, of your ket v, and in order to do so, it's actually quite straightforward. Again, keep in mind that these uh, are essentially, just remember the geometric kind of version of your, um, Cats in this case, and what an orthonormal basis is, right? In this case, if it was two-dimensional, um, that would be kind of saying like you have some vector here, and we're just basically breaking it down into its horizontal and vertical components. And the similar kind of concept may be said of these cats that we have here. We, we're breaking them down into components in accordance uh, to the quote-unquote directions provided by these cats. And so all we have to do is, according to the Pythagorean theorem, with a regular right triangle that we have here, we have A, B, C, right? The Pythagorean theorem states a squared plus b squared equals the c squared right because we've broken it down into your vertical and horizontal components right and the magnitude of them should be equal to each other right magnitude 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 and so in this case the magnitude of your cat v squared should be equal to c1 squared plus c2 squared plus so on so forth until we reach c and squared and so that's the last and third final item all right so that is the kind of crash course uh, to linear algebra uh, for quantum computing
Uh, as always, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach the uh, Community Quantum uh, website. Um, and as always, stay curious and keep on learning.